I'd like to welcome everyone to our next step in our Seven Steps Total Health, which is a year and a half program to find what we need to change in our life and have the tools at hand to make those changes, constructively and positively. Once you lay out everything that we have to lay out, cleansing, detoxification, rejuvenation, stress management, exercise, um, dealing with positive attitude, changing our perception, uh, uncluttering our life, the things that we know we must do, none of this is new. I mean, many of these are basic principles. I'm sure you've even told your own children or you were told. It's applying them that counts. I don't see that we need any more knowledge. I see we need a new way of knowing what to do with that knowledge. And we're going to begin by taking a look at how do we go from here, where we're not really happy, it's not what we want, to here, where we could be de-aging, de-diseasing, and really seeing how beautiful life can be. Now, what makes us go from here to here? Purpose. How do we get that purpose? Passion drives the purpose. What creates passion? Desire. How do we get desire? Well, we have to see everything that we're doing that limits it or says that we don't deserve it or in some way that negates it. For every yes that we're given as a child, we're generally given up to 80 no's. Now, by the time you're five, you've had hundreds of thousands of no's. And you've learned that with a no, you get punishment or disciplined. And yes, you get rewards. So children begin to comply because they know where their survival is. They're too small, they're not intellectual, and they're purely emotional, inward or outward, either defiant or fear. And that's a very limited range of ways that a kid can cope. Unfortunately, as a child develops, those very qualities are what end up solidifying their personality and how they deal with life, possibly until they die never knowing that it's not what they're having happen in the moment that they're in that determines the choice they make. Walking down a street, you smell the pizza, you look, you say, smells good, do I want it, do I not want it? Whether you take it or don't take it will determine upon your conditioning more than anything else. So it's not as if we're living in the moment. It's not as if right now, in this second, we can make reasonable, rational, healthy choices. If that were the case, then how many times have you made the wrong choice and then ended up suffering from it? Even if it's loaning someone money, you knew they weren't going to get it back. Or trusting someone to give you another chance when you caught them doing something and, and you knew if you did, they were just going to take advantage of it. They weren't going to learn from it. How many times in life have we done the wrong thing and then punished ourselves through guilt or anger but why do we keep doing it? Why do you keep going back to the same way? Why? What is it that's driving that? Conditioning. Good point. Now, how do you know that what you're doing is conditioning versus your own free will? You keep doing it over and over. It's like a habit. Right. And how do you know that it's a habit? You don't think about it. You just do it. So what you've got to do, you've got to stop for a moment and take a look at what you're doing and say, do I keep doing this over and over again? Do I keep coming back to the same way of thinking and feeling? And only when you get still enough to do it can you see how much of your life is programmed. You're just all like on automatic. So I'll bet when a lot of you get up in the morning, whatever you do for the next hour is almost the same every day. Right? When you take a shower, do you wash your body the same way almost every time? <laughs> yeah. So if you start with your armpit, then every day it's the left armpit, right armpit, groin, the pa right? What would happen if you did the groin, then the armpit? <laughs> Even how you dry yourself, whether you put the foot up on this and do this or do that, right? Just programming. Even what you do when you go to eat, how you eat, do you watch television eat? Do you stand up at a counter and eat? Do you sit down at a table and eat? Do you eat quickly, even when you're not rushed, as if you were rushed? 
Do you ever watch people, there's no reason to rush through a meal, and yet they rush through a meal and then kind of sit there while you finish <laughs> and then get agitated that you're not eating fast enough, kind of look at you like, okay, <laughs> can't you go faster? I'm bored already. Eat. Let's get out of here. And someone else is just taking their time. That's what we have to break. But you can't break what you're not aware of. How many times have you had people call you on the phone to complain and you've listened knowing that you've done this so many times in the past and nothing's going to change because of it? That's a pattern of behavior too. So what I'm going to try to do from this day forward is to get you to be aware that we have choices. One choice is to do nothing except what you've always done and therefore expect what from it? The same. Good. Or to go through discomfort, and it will be uncomfortable, and force a different type of thought, an action. In which case, you have another possibility has now come, which is change. Change is not necessarily a happy or positive occurrence in the short term. And a lot of people have made it seem like, oh, yeah, let's all change. It's so good. It's so nice. Wrong. Change almost never works initially. I mean, change feels uncomfortable. And not only does it feel uncomfortable, it can upset relationships. It can upset routines. It can upset biological rhythms. You know, if you're used to eating and then trying to go to bed or eating while you're in bed watching television and then you lay there for an hour and, and, and now you don't eat for, you know, and you go to bed only when you're tired, you might go to bed at two hours earlier, two hours later. And so things are going to change. Even the idea of letting your hair grow if you've always kept it short. Cutting it short if you've always had it long. Cutting your beard off, growing a beard. Just changing. Just to see what it's like to let go and be more in the moment. Otherwise, how are you going to change your diet? You're not. You'll keep all that's bad and add one new thing in. And we've seen that happen. So what we want to do, we want to change everything in our life and see what works that we can really honor, that's honoring us. The whole idea of disease is disease exists because there is conflict. Conflict occurs when there is imbalance. Therefore, in order to help prevent disease, you have to prevent conflict, and that means you have to have balance. So what in your life creates imbalance? That's a question, that's homework. Make it, write it, that's very important. That's your first homework assignment for today. What creates, what creates imbalance? Now, it may be cellular imbalance, psychological imbalance, emotional imbalance. It may be environmental imbalance. What creates imbalances in your relationships? What creates an imbalance in your work environment? What creates an imbalance in your family dynamics? What creates imbalance in, in your economic reality? In other words, are you spending far less than what you make? Are you spending as much as you make? Are you spending more than you make? Is your debt here and your asset equity here? A lot of people are stressed simply because of their cash flow. Now, let me ask you, would you feel different if you had a lot more savings and a lot less debt? Right? What would be different? I'd feel more secure. You'd feel more secure. Okay? Now, the things that you bought that you ended up creating insecurity, any of you have financial insecurity in here? All right? All right, we'll start with you. When you created financial insecurity, did you think at the moment that you were doing that, that you were going to feel insecure for what you were buying? You thought you could handle it. But then at some point, the perfection of our thoughts gave way to the reality of the consequences of our actions. Then the first idea was to 